child shall be born for us, and he will be called God, the Almighty. Every tribe of the earth shall be blessed in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today the Church celebrates the Feast of St. John of Canty. St. John Cantius comes to us from Poland from the 15th century, a Polish priest, a professor, a love and concern for uh, the uh, poor. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the example of the priest St. John of Canty, we may advance in the knowledge of holy things, and by showing compassion to all, we may gain forgiveness in your sight. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, he teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came to the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one amongst your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, Blessing God. Then fear came upon all the neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These late days of Advent has almost been like watching a tennis game back and forth, the story of the circumstances around the birth of John the Baptist, 
and then we look to the other side and of course the circumstances of the birth of our Lord. And so we've come to this time now of the birth of John that Elizabeth has had her child as it was told to Zechariah in the temple when he was chosen by random lot but they saw it as God choosing the person he wanted. And the angel spoke and said, this is how you are going to participate in God's plan, Zechariah. And so here it is. He uh, still is struck mute, deaf, that he uh, has been given this sort of retreat because he questioned how this is all working in God's plan. And now the moment comes. And the moment the mission is fulfilled, the moment the time is that John's uh, mission begins with his birth on earth, so Zechariah's retreat is finished, and now he has the power to speak. Tomorrow we'll get his first words after being able to get the gift of speech again. Malachi gives us this prediction that centuries before he would send a messenger, God would, uh, to prepare the way, that he would purify this like gold and silver. You use that heat, perhaps intense heat, to you know, kind of take out the infirmities, the impurities. In, in gold or silver, so all that's left is the pure metal. And then we get that line, he will purify the sons of Levi. The Levites were the priests. John, Zechariah, Elizabeth were all Levites. So in this way, Zechariah, by the end of his sort of self-imposed, that retreat that he was given, that silence, God has finished purifying him. God has, uh, now Zechariah understands this mission that God has in mind. Um, and so the work will begin. The neighbors are like us. What kind of child will this be? Well, we've read the book. We know what's going to happen. We know what kind of child this is and the role and the mission he will have. He has already come into contact with the one he is called to announce. Remember at the visitation when Mary goes to visit Elizabeth. He's already been announcing Jesus by leaping in the womb. He will not become, he'll be, the, they'll say, the last of the Old Testament prophets, the first of the New Testament, let's say, apostles the ones who are sent by God, sent on a mission. Um, he'll have that, that gift. And it begins, we see it here, that all is being laid into motion now at the birth of these children, right? Um, I'm reminded of one of the Star Wars movies that ends with the birth of Luke Skywalker and Leia. Well, she doesn't know it yet, Leia Skywalker. That at the, it ends with the birth of these babies. Now, of course, the movies came in time out of order, so we know exactly what's going to happen to the babies. We know what's going to happen to Luke, we know what's going to happen to Leah. So in the same way, we already know what it is, what's going to happen. And hopefully, you know, we, during this time of Advent, as we are just about to touch down into the season of Christmas, we've had time to ponder God's words, to be silent, to wait, to anticipate, and to see where we fit into that plan, what mission, what role God has for us. Maybe we are called to be some sort of a messenger, right? Maybe we're called to live in sort of obscurity in one little corner of the world, right? St. John of Canty today uh, was train, training to be a, a, a university professor um, and taught many years in philosophy, but also then discerned a call to the priesthood. He joins what's called the Canons Regular, which is a, a group of canons are, are priests that are assigned to a, a cathedral. And so they, uh, Canons Regular mean that it's not just a title given that they come from wherever to serve at the cathedral. These are people who live there, have a rule of life, almost a monastic community within the cathedral, and he joins them. Very famously, a few years ago, a community of canons regular began in Chicago, calling themselves the canons regular of St. John Cantius. Um, and so in there, he was not only called to priesthood, he not only taught well and uh, defended the church at different times, but also was known to have a servant's heart, a generous heart, lived just with the bare minimum needs. Though he was an accomplished professor and people would have said he has a, you know, entitled to some sort of a comfort in his life and did what he could to help students who were having financial issues, students who needed a place to stay, students who struggled, you know, he did what he could. And in this little part, not looking to become a national hero, a world figure, he did his job. He lived holiness very quietly in his own world. And so maybe that's our call as well, to look at these saints like that, who did their job so well, who fulfilled their vocation, their call from God so well, you know, that, that their holiness took notice that people saw. And years later, becomes one of the canon, one of the list of saints. St. Saint John Canty prayed for us.
We lift our hearts to the Lord and bring him our petitions. For church leaders, may the Lord bless them as they proclaim the good news of Christmas to all who come to celebrate the feast. We pray to the Lord. For all those who govern, may God direct their hearts toward the poor among us. We pray to the Lord. For those for whom this time of year is a burden, may the Lord draw near to them in their sorrow. We pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Lord give us the graces we need to finish our Advent preparations well. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may God bring them into his everlasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For Josephine Casanento and for the intentions of Timothy Eck, for whom Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. God of all creation, thank you for every goodness you have given us. We ask you to hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. good and the good of all this holy church amen may this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you O lord that what we that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our redeemer who lives and reigns forever and ever the lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling john the baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came it is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. John of Canty, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. those watching by live stream, we offer our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.